Hey, shalom, most high in Christ, bless Israel, Officer Jez, IUIC, Philly. All right, and today we're going to go into the title of the class is called The Condition of the Battle. The Condition of the Battle. What does it mean, the condition of the battle? Well, in this truth, you're going to face your trials and your tribulations. All right, we call them battles. You understand? So a lot of times you ask a brother or sister, um, you know, what are your battles? What are you battling? And it's either, you know, either you win in the battle or you lose in the battle. You know, but sometimes they just say, I'm battling. Okay, are you winning or are you losing? Right? But the uh, title of the class is called The Condition of the Battle. Let's get that. Give me 2nd Ezra 757. 2nd Ezra Chapter 7, verse 57. Matter of fact, I'm sorry. Let's start at 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, verse 1. 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, verse 1. And when he had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the nights before. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Up, Ezra, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on, my God. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But, great. Put, but put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river, who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it. If he went not through the narrow, how could he come unto the broad? There it also another thing, excuse me, there is also another thing. A city is builded. So there is also another thing. A city is builded. Go ahead. So now this is the kingdom of heaven. So the angel is given a similar to or par parable concerning the kingdom of heaven and what you have to do in order to obtain the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. Read. There is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. Right. Talking about paradise, right? Full of all good things. The kingdom of heaven. Read. The entrance thereof is narrow. And it's set in a dangerous place to fall. So now he says the entrance thereof is narrow. It's narrow. It's narrow. And it's set in a what? In a dangerous place to fall. And now it is set in a dangerous place that you can fall. Give me that in Matthew 7 and 7. Matthew 7, verse 7. Hold that. Give me Matthew 7, verse 7. It is set in a dangerous place to fall. Matthew. Chapter 7, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. But what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Jump to 13. Verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. So now Christ... Come back and tell the disciples, you must enter in into the straight gate. Go ahead. For wide is the gate. So the straight gate is that narrow gate. Read on. Read that part again. For wide is the gate. For wide is the gate. Go ahead. And broad is the way. And broad is the way. So what do you mean? Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. For what gate? Christianity. Uh, Islam. So all these various religions out here, those gates are wide. Everybody's going through those, those different types of gate, gates. Christianity gate is wide open. Islam, that gate is wide open. Everybody's walking through those gates. Anybody can go through that gate. Read on, read that again. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way. You see that? And broad is the way. Go ahead. That leadeth to destruction. What do the religions lead to? To destruction. Christianity leads to destruction. And Islam leads to destruction. Now, the reason why I named those two, because they're the, the two uh, most dominant religions. All right? You got Christianity and you have Islam. The, most, the two most dominant religions on the planet today. All right? Read on. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight. So hold on, hold on. It said, and many there be which go in thereat. 
All the other nations are going into these gates. Even two thirds of our people is going to be going into these gates. Islam and Christianity, two thirds of our, that just two thirds of our people will go into these gates because wide and broad is the way into, into, when you enter into that gate. Read on. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. But because straight is the gate, straight meaning narrow is the gate and what? And narrow is the way. And narrow is the way. So Christ is saying now, and to, and to enter into life now, meaning what? Faith in keeping the commandments, that gate is narrow. Go ahead. Which leadeth unto life. And that gate leads to life. It leads to the kingdom. It leads to immortality. Read. And few there be that find it. And you see that? And there are few people that find it. Okay, there's only a few that will find it. One third. One, that's the one third. All right. Now, let's go back to Second Edris. Second Edris 7. Second Edris, chapter 7 and verse 7. The entrance thereof is narrow. So now, the entrance thereof is narrow. Go ahead. And is set in a dangerous place to fall. And is set in a dangerous place to fall. Read on. Watch this. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand. So now let's take a look at this narrow path. It's set in a dangerous place to fall as if there were fire on the right hand. Read on. And on the left, a deep water. And on the left, a deep water. Read. And one only path between them both. And there's only one path. Between the water and the fire. Read. Even between the fire and the water. Read on. So small that there could but one man go there at once. You know what that means? You can only save yourself. You can't have you and your family. You can't have you and your wife. You and your wife can't walk in together on this, on this narrow path. You, your wife, and your children can't walk together on this narrow path. No. Only but one man can go at one time. Meaning what? You can only save yourself. Read on. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance. So if the kingdom of heaven were now given to a man for an inheritance. Read. If he never shall pass the danger set before it. So guess what? We got to go through that danger. You're not going to escape unscathed. You must go through the danger. You must go through these obstacles. That's what the battle is about. That is the condition of the battle. Read. How shall he receive this inheritance? How can you receive an inheritance if you don't go through what it if you don't go through what it took to get the inheritance? You think you, you think it's just gonna get handed to you? Nah, that's not how the Lord works. You gotta work for that. You must work for your inheritance. The Lord ain't gonna just hand it to us. He handed it to us before, but we messed that up. So now we got to work twice as hard to get it back. Read on. And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. You, saw that? you see that? Even so is Israel's portion. This is our portion in life. We must go through these obstacles in order to obtain the kingdom of heaven now. Read on. Because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was the creed that now is done. Right. Give me second edges. Uh, give verse 57. Verse 57. The title of the class. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. This is the what? Condition of the battle. This is the condition of the battle. This is Israel's portion now. That what? We must go through that narrow path. We must... We must uh, go before that danger, that fire on the right, that water on the left. This is what we got to do in order to obtain the kingdom of heaven now. Read that again. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. You see that? This is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. That the Israelite man born upon the earth shall fight. Why? Because this is our portion in life. Read on. That if he be overcome. That if he what? 
be overcome. That if he be overcome. We're going to talk about being overcome. We're going to talk about that later on. Go ahead. He shall suffer as thou hast said. Read. But. So if you be, if you become, if you uh, become overcome with what? Your sins. Meaning what? You're losing the battle. Then you're going to suffer. In that lake of fire. Read. But. If he get the victory. But if you over but if you overcome your sins and get the victory, read, he shall receive the thing that I say. Which was what? Hold that. What's the thing that Christ said? Give me uh Revelations 226. We're gonna deal with being overcome with your sin. But right now, let's what what is the thing that Christ said? Revelation. If, if you do win the battle. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. And he that overcometh. And he that what? Overcometh. And he that overcometh. You overcame your obstacle. You fought the good fight, like Paul said. You won the battle. Read. And keepeth my works unto the end. And you're keeping God's laws until the end. Read. To him will I give power over the nation. You see that? That's when you overcome your sins. That's when you win the battle. Then you get power over the nations. All right. All praises. Go back. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 59. Mm -hmm. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. Nevertheless, they believed not him nor right. yet the prophets after him. From there, from there, give me Galatians 5. What is the battle? Give me Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. What is the battle? What is the battle? What is it? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. So we all should be walking in the spirit of Christ. Read. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And ye shall not fulfill what? The lust of the flesh. That translates to one word. Sin. The lust of the flesh is sin. Read. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. So the flesh lusteth against the spirit. That's the battle. It's a war between the flesh and the spirit. Read it again. Read that again. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Uh huh. And the spirit against the flesh. And the spirit against the flesh. Read. And these are contrary the one to the other. Mm -hmm. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. You see that? It's a battle. It's a war going on. It's a spiritual war within your mind. All right, read on. But if ye be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Read. Now. The works of the flesh are manifest. So now the works of the flesh are manifest. The works of sin are manifest. Go ahead. Which are these? Adultery. Hold on. From there, give me uh real quick. Hold that. Give me Sirach 1731. For the uh the flesh. Sirach 1731. The flesh, the flesh. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 17, verse 31. Read. What is brighter than the sun? Yet the light thereof faileth, and flesh and blood will imagine evil. You see that? Flesh and blood will imagine evil. Sin. Flesh and blood will imagine evil, which is sin. All right? Go back. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Read. Adultery. Adultery. Fornication. So fornication. So adultery, okay, meaning what? You married, but you're sleeping, you're breaking uh, the laws of marriage. Okay, go ahead. Fornication. Fornication. Sleeping around, different women. Women sleeping around with different men. Go ahead. Uncleanness. All a manner of uncleanness. Go ahead. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Read. Idolatry. Idolatry. Witchcraft. All witchcraft, hatred, hatred, variance, being at variance with someone. Go ahead. Emulations, emulations. Go ahead. Wrath, mm -hmm. strife. Read. Seditions, seditions. Going against the government. Read. Heresies and heresies. Okay, heresies. But I want to focus on lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. All right. Let's look that word up. Lasciviousness. 
Lascivious. Filled with or showing sexual desire. Okay. Lewd. Lewd. Lustful. Lewd and lustful. That's what lascivious means. Lasciviousness. Lewd and lustful. Lewd and lustful. Let's get some of those. Uh, let me see what it got here. Lascivious acts. Um, arrested for lewd and lascivious assault. Hey, <laughs> I don't know if y'all watch Bishop Shout Out Tuesdays, but a pastor was just arrested. For lewd and lascivious assault. That was the exact charge they gave him. Lewd and lascivious assault. Damn. Lasciviousness. Lascivious, lewd, and lustful. Lewd and lustful. All right. Um, from there, from there. So, one battle. I'm just naming one battle. One battle that brothers is going through and some sisters is going through as well. That they are losing to is porn, pornography. All right, it's it's rampant. Brothers is mm, brothers is losing their wits <laughs> over porn. Let me say it like that: losing their wits over porn. All right. Now, give me um, give me the link, the uh, the first article. Give me the first article. About porn. The first article. Does pornography affect spirituality? So, does pornography affect spirituality? Right here, read this. Pornography encourages addiction to lust. Pornography encourages addiction to lust. Mm -hmm. Addiction enslaves our willpower. So... It says pornography encourages addiction to lust and it, it enslaves our willpower. Okay, meaning your willpower is your drive to do things, right? But it's saying that porn would slow that down. It would enslave it. Go ahead. And leads to the total decay of a person. And it will decay you as a person. Yeah, hey, we, uh, Captain Joel, <laughs> Captain Joel always, uh, Brings it up, but how a brother will have the dumb look on their face when you're when when brothers are dealing, you could tell when a brother's dealing in porn, they got the dumb look. I, I can't. It's like a like a you know, <laughs> it's like a retarded look on on a brother's face. You could tell when he's dabbling in porn. It's like a dumb. It's a dumb spirit, right? But go back, go back to the uh, article, read that part again. Addiction enslaves our willpower uh-huh. and leads to the total decay of a person. So you can see that person is starting to decay. You can see it in a face. Go ahead. If you want proof, simply observe the life of any addict. How addict look? <laughs> when you look at any drug addict or crackhead and so forth, they have this, 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 this stupor look on their face. This this dumb look. That's the way brothers and some like I said, some sisters look that way too. Okay, but that's how porn will have you. You it, it, you don't have no willpower to do anything. It enslaves you. Go ahead, read on. The porn addict can never satisfy their desire, but they cannot stop trying, which feeds anger, violence, depression. Wait a minute. So he said the porn addict can never satisfy his desire. Damn! But, <laughs> anyway, read that again. Read through me all. The, por- the porn addict can never satisfy their desire. So the porn addict can never satisfy his desire. Go ahead. But they cannot stop trying. Yo, but you keep going back for more and more. It's not satisfying. But it keeps calling you back just like a drug. Go ahead. Which feeds anger. So the one thing that feeds, it put an anger spirit on you. Go ahead. Violence. You, now you got a violent spirit on you. You ready to fight. Go ahead. Depression. And ultimately depression. Depression. Okay. So this is the things that porn will do to a brother. Go ahead. The search for satisfaction leads to ever-increasing abuse 
of the sexual energy and sexual glands. So you're abusing your sexual energy and your sexual glands when you deal with porn. Read. An eventual depletion of one's vitality. Your strength. Your strength is gone. You don't want to do nothing. You're lazy now. You don't been, you don't been, you you been, you ain't move off the couch. You ain't move from the computer desk. Lotion sitting in one hand and <laughs> yeah, you know. But that's what porn is doing to brothers. It has you, it, it's like it has chains on you, man. Go back. Read on. Causing early aging. Damn, so porn causes early aging. Go ahead. Impotence. Impotence? Glandular imbalances. Hey, look up impotence. Look up impotence. Impotence. Uh Uh-huh. Inability to take effective action. Yeah, the stupid look. (laughs) Impotence, that's, that's the dumb look. You have the inability to take effective action. Helplessness. There's any more synonyms on that? Inability in a man to achieve an erection or orgasm. So you get so if you have a wife, now you got ED. Erectile dysfunction. All this come from dealing with porn, man. It's because of the addiction. Yep. Ritos. Impotent, not potent, lacking power or ability. Mm-hmm. Lacking power ability. Go ahead. Utterly unable to do something. You see that? <laughs> you can't, you don't have no willpower to do anything. Go ahead. Without force or effectiveness. Read those synonyms. Weak. Weak. Feeble. Uh-huh. Ineffective. Ineffectual. Ineffectual. So you weak, feeble, and effective, and ineffectual. We see this in brothers. The brothers, brothers is weak in the spirit. They're feeble, ineffective, and ineffectual. They don't have that drive. They just hear. They hear with the they got the, the dumb look on their face. Is that is there any more in there? That's it, right? All right. Go back to the article real quick. I got I got two more articles, so go back. Read on. Uh glandular imbalances, <laughs> other addictions. The decline of our sexual power is why there is a rise of synthetic chemicals and drugs in an attempt to restore the wasted sexual energy. Right. So porn depletes that sexual energy that you would use on your wife. Okay. So now, because of the inability to have intercourse with your wife because of porn, now you got now they're making all these type of synthetic chemicals that could be even more dangerous. And these drugs that they have, Viagra, Cialis, and so forth, okay, that's because you, we're depleting. <laughs> You're depleting your sexual energy, your sexual power, all right? That's what porn does. Read on. The use of pornography damages the mind and the heart. So this is what I wanted to get to as well. The use of pornography damages the mind and the heart. Now, we know that the heart is the mind. Give me that up in um, what's that, Mark 7. Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Read. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. You see that? So out of the heart of a man proceeds evil thoughts. Like what? Read on. Adulteries. Mm -hmm. Fornications. Read. Murders. Read. Thefts. Covetousness. Wickedness. Mm -hmm. Deceit. Lasciviousness. What? Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Read on. An evil lie. Evil eye towards your brother. Blasphemy. Lies. Pride. Pride. Go ahead. Foolishness. Mm -hmm. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Right. So all these evil things come from the heart, the mind. All right. Read that again. The use of pornography damages the mind and the heart. You see that? So pornography would damage your mind. It would damage your heart. Okay. Your spirit. Go ahead. The heart becomes dull, dark, empty. You see that? The heart becomes dull, dark, and empty. We see this on brothers' faces. I'm not lying to you. (laughs) We see this. The brother looks dull, 
dark, and he his he looks empty. His mind is just empty. He's like, yo, it's it's a dumb look. Go ahead. And filled with dissatisfaction. Uh-huh. Despair. Read. Loneliness. Hold on. Hey, stop. Give me empty. You know why he is, is he's empty? Give me uh Matthew 12. Book of Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Mm-hmm. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. The unclean spirit is sin. Go ahead. That's that matter of fact, that's the spirit you were battling with. That unclean spirit is your battle. So when it goes out of you now, you won the battle. Right? Go ahead. He walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. So meaning what? You overcame that spirit. Okay, go ahead. He do what? Read that again. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, mm -hmm. he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Read. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. So guess what? That spirit leaves for a season, and he's coming right back. That spirit said, look, whether it's, whether it's the spirit of adultery, whether it's the spirit of whoremongering, the spirit of smoking weed, pornography, Whatever spirit you were battling before you walked through these doors and said, look, I want to keep the Lord's commandments, that spirit leaves you. You overcame it, right? But guess what? He's going to come back around. Read. And when he has come, he findeth it empty. He findeth what? Empty. What did he find empty? Your mind. Your mind was empty. Why? Read on. Swept it and was it was empty, swept, go ahead, and garnished. And garnished. Read. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So hold on, he found a clean house with nothing in it. Everything was gone. Now he said, Yo, I'm gonna bring my boys. I'm gonna bring my boys with me. He brings seven other spirits that were more what? Wicked than himself. He brings seven other spirits that are more wicked than the way he was. So, for example, if you were a weed head, or maybe you started out smoking some cigarettes, then you went to weed. That wasn't strong enough, so now you said, damn, I'm, I may need to smoke a little a little wet. So now you now you smoking wet, smoke a little angel dust or whatever. That's not strong enough, so you graduate to crack. So the spirits is there, they, they're getting worse and worse and worse. Okay? Go ahead, read on. And they enter in and dwell there. You see that? And now those seven wicked spirits that came, now they enter in and now they dwell in your spirit now, in your mind. They inhabit your mind. Go ahead. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Right. And the last state is worse than the first. But why is that happening? Because why? You're not studying. Why are you empty? You're not studying. Instead of instead of studying, guess what you do? As soon as you open the computer up, as soon as you open your Bible up in front of your computer, you start scrolling. And now you're on triple X dot whatever those sites call today. Okay. And then you're starting to fill your mind with what? All types of lasciviousness, lewd and lustful acts. That's what's happening. Depleting your sexual power. All right. Um, from there, from there. Go back to the article. Let's read the, uh, finish up. The use of pornography mm -hmm. damages the mind and the heart. Mm -hmm. The heart becomes dull, dark, empty. And filled with dissatisfaction, despair, loneliness, and loses its sensitivity, empathy, sense of right and wrong, etc. Right. I read on. By continually seeking more stimulating sensations, the conscience degenerates. The conscience degenerates. Degenerates. That's your mind. Your conscience is your mind. But it gets worse. Read that part again. By continually seeking more stimulating sensations, the conscience degenerates. And do what? And becomes capable of shameful criminal mm -hmm. acts. Damn. Porn leads you to being a criminal. That's how bad it is. That's how, just like an addict. 
You know how a crackhead is going to be breaking through windows, looking for a radio, and so forth. <laughs> you, you, you might as well do the same thing being on porn, watching porn. Go ahead. This is why there is so much violent sexual crime. Pornography causes people to confuse. So you mess around and 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 commit a sexual assault. Because why? The things that you're seeing on the screen, you're trying to act it out. You mess around and 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 get involved in raping someone. Okay? Because why? It's putting that spirit on you. Read on. Pornography causes people to confuse lust with love. You see that? That's what happened. So you confusing lust with love. Go ahead. Believing that lustful behavior is a sign of love has devastating consequences, mm -hmm. leading to adultery. Leading to what? Adultery. We just read that. Leading to adultery. Read. Divorce. It will lead to divorce. Promiscuity. Promiscuity. Loneliness. Uh -huh. Depression. Anger. Suicide. And eventually it will lead to suicide. That's how bad porn, he's telling you how bad it is. These are the... the uh, the steps that you're going to go through with porn, okay, is going to lead to adultery, divorce, promiscuity, all right, loneliness. Now, after you done did all those things, you become lonely, <laughs> right? And now you're depressed because you're lonely. You're getting angry, and then you're having suicidal thoughts. All right, watch this. Read on. Sexual fantasy via porn corrupts and wastes our creative power. Like I said before, that go back to brothers having that dumb look. So when you ask a brother to do something, he don't, he can't think. Give me the scripture. Uh, it's in Wisdom of Solomon one and four. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter one verse four. That creative power that we're supposed to have. As, as being Israelites, as being God's people, we're supposed to have that genius, that creative power to do anything. But porn slows that down. But why? Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, might be verse 3. Let me see. Let me get there with you. Nah. Um, forward thoughts. Yes, sir. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 3. For forward thoughts separate from God. You see that? Look at the word forward, please. Forward. For, for forward thoughts will separate from God. Forward means willful and disobedient. Mm -hmm. Willful and disobedient. Read on. No, no. Let me see. Get, get some more. Let's try to get some synonyms. Yeah, dictionary.com. Yep. Forward. Uh, willfully contrary. Not easily managed. Unmanageable. Difficult. Wayward. Fractious. Disobedient. Mm -hmm. Willful. Obstinate. All right. So unmanageable, difficult, wayward, uh, fractitious, disobedient, meaning you're breaking God's laws, willful, and abstinent. All right. Read that again. For forward thoughts separate from God. So forward thoughts separate from God. Read on. And his power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. Mm -hmm. For into a malicious soul. For into a malicious, meaning an evil soul. Read. Wisdom shall not enter. Wisdom won't be there. Read. Nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. You see that? Nor will wisdom dwell in a body that is subject to sin. Read on. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. So the Holy Spirit of discipline. Discipline is a spirit. The Holy Spirit of discipline will do what? Will flee deceit. It will flee deceit. Go ahead. And Lie, it will flee deceit. Brother, deceitful. Go ahead. Lies. Go ahead. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And it's going to remove for any thoughts that's in your mind without. That don't have no understanding. Go ahead. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. You see that? So wisdom is going to leave you all together. If, you wa if you're watching porn habitually, there's no wisdom. How can wisdom dwell in you? That's what he's saying. Wisdom is not going to be there. It's going to separate from you. So go back to the article now. 
Sexual fanny, sexual fantasy via porn corrupts and wastes our creative power. You see that? It, so you don't, you can't think of, I, you, you get that, that, that block. That's what we call it. We call it the block. You can't think straight. All right. You, you don't have, you can't come up with any ideas. Nothing. You just have the block. So any creative power, any, uh, uh, any faculties that you may have had before, it's going to, uh, watching porn, pornography is going to take away from all of that. It's going to erase that out of your mind. Right? Go ahead. The power of creation is our sexual energy. When you waste your sexual energy, you also waste your creative power. Right. You waste your creative power. All right. Go down. Any more there? Yeah, read on. We can read this whole article, be honest with you. Read, go ahead, read. Pornography is a doorway to prostitution, mm -hmm. which destroys the conscience and body of everyone involved with it. Right. So it, it, pornography is going to destroy the conscience and body. All right, go ahead. Pornography is a doorway to black magic. So now, pornography is even a doorway to black magic. Witchcraft. Go ahead. Witchcraft and other harmful practices. Read. For instance, what is commonly promoted as Tantra is actually black magic. It utilizes lust to develop negative, negative powers. powers. Damn. So pornography will open up the door to witchcraft, it's to the spiritual realm. That's what pornography would do. It would have you seeing demons. Read on. Lust. We got an article. I'm going to get an article on that too. Go ahead. Lust is found only in demons. demons, not in angels or Buddhas. So it's only found in demons because lust is a demon. Next article now. Next article. Still dealing with porn. Still dealing with pornography. Yep. Porn and the demonic realm. So we're going to jump around on here. We're not going to read this whole thing. Let me see what I want. Give me where it says the porn industry. The porn industry today is literally the kingdom of darkness at work. Did you see that? The porn industry today is literally the kingdom of darkness at work. Go ahead. In the lives of men and women. Mm -hmm. There is also a huge supernatural element to porn addiction. So they let you know that there's a, a huge supernatural element that's involved in porn addiction. Go ahead. Which involves spiritual bondage. Damn. So that's those that's you bound in those chains. Give me the, give me that in uh second edges sixteen. The Lord speaks about this. Second edges sixteen. We showing you the depths of porn. Second Ezra's chapter sixteen, verse seventy seven. Read. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sin. You see that? Woe unto them that are bound. Destruction to them that are bound with their sins. Go ahead. And covered with their iniquities. Mm -hmm. Cover with your sins. Go ahead. Like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. You see that? You can't come up out of that. Go ahead. It is left undressed. And it's cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. That's all that's going to happen. You're going to be cast into the fire if you don't overcome. Okay? Because, but when it, it says that the porn, in, wait, let me go down. It says, uh, yeah, the porn industry today is literally the kingdom of darkness at work in the lives of men and women. There is also a huge supernatural element to porn addiction, which involves a spiritual bondage. That you cannot come up out of. Meaning it, it'll overcome you. it have you bound. Okay. Read on. Extreme guilt. And a sense of failure and rejection. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, even suicide. Porn would drive you to even trying to kill yourself. Suicide. Okay. And if you do that, you ain't getting the kingdom. We just read that in 2nd Edge 7. Why? Because you never went through the battle. You gave up. You said, man, I can't do it. You didn't do what it took to overcome your sin, which we're going to get into, some solutions. 
but you just gave up and said the hell with it. Read on. Willpower alone is not enough to break this prevailing hold on individual lives. So your own willpower can't help you get out of this. <laughs> Read that again. Willpower alone is not enough to break this prevailing hold on individual lives. Read on. Let me tell you, it takes the mighty work of the word of God and his Holy Spirit. And what do God says? Give me um, uh, what Christ said in Mark uh. What, Mark chapter 9. Matter of fact, read on. We'll get into those solutions. We'll get into those. In Psalms 101, verse 3, David said, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Over, the, over the last month, I have talked to several church leaders and also other elders who I look to. I fully agree with them, and I will share some things with you right away. Go down. Go down. Let me see. If, um, yeah, read that. Anyone involved in the occult will tell you that drug use provides a direct gateway to the spiritual realm. Read that again. Anyone involved in the occult will tell you. So, hold on. Anyone that's involved in any type of of a cult that's in a cult go ahead will tell you that drug use they would tell you that any type of drug use does what provides a direct gateway to the spiritual realm <laughs> it would he they would tell you that drug use provides a direct gateway to the spiritual realm when you smoking weed you smoking crack meth sniffing whatever you doing it provides a direct gateway to the spiritual realm. Why? Because drugs is sorcery. That's what it is. It's, sor it's sorcery. But remember what we're dealing with here. Remember what we're talking about. We're talking about porn. Read on. Drugs are directly tied to sorcery in the Bible. There you go. Go ahead. And most pagan cultures use drugs in their religious rituals, which heighten spiritual awareness. Which, which heightens spiritual awareness. You trying to get high as hell. Go ahead. And the demonic realm. And the, it only going to open you up to the demonic realm. All right. Go ahead. I know this for sure. That on a porn set. Oh, now he, he brings it back to porn. On the porn set. Drugs and alcohol are used to dull the senses of the people in acting the stuff. Uh-huh. Making them So he's saying he's saying that those involved in the in the um in the act all right of porn okay on the on the porn set on the scene or whatever they're doing drugs and alcohol to numb themselves in order to get to that 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 level of heightness of spirituality. Go ahead making them more willing to do things that a normal person in an average state of mind would never do. Right. Read it. Go ahead. It is common knowledge, and I know that firsthand, that drug use makes a person more susceptible to demonic influence. That's correct. Go ahead. That is why porn actors have their senses numbed by drugs, drugs and, and alcohol. alcohol. It is here on these sets that multiple demons gather together. Damn. So he telling you on that set, demons is gathered around. Go ahead. The people on the set and the school, excuse me, and the shoot are completely oblivious to the spiritual inner workings going on deep in their own personal spirit. Right. They just behind the camera. They're not really seeing what's they're not they're not engulfed in the actual act of what's going on. But it's there. Go ahead. The more they do this the more they open up themselves to increase demonic influence that wreck their lives in the days to come. And anyone involved with the occult will tell you that the more you open up to this stuff, the more demons will enter in, in to stay. stay. So that's what pornography is doing, man. It's another level. Go ahead. So those that are involved with porn are under the control of wicked entities. entities. Damn. So <laughs> read it again. So those that are involved with porn are under the control of wicked, wicked entities. entities. Go ahead. These entities will numb them to any sense of spiritual awareness in the word or the Holy Spirit. Right. So what, give me, um, watch this. Give me uh, Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 12.
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 12. I think you started at 11. Verse 11. Yea, speedily was he taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. soul. Verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness. For the bewitching of naughtiness. For the, the, uh, for the tricking of sin. Go ahead. Doth obscure things. Hold that on, I, hold on, hold on. Bewitched. Got, you know, we got to look these words up. Read the definition of bewitched. For the bewitched of naughtiness. Read that. Affected by or as if by witchcraft. By what? Witchcraft. By witchcraft. Or magic. Uh-huh. Under a spell. Under a spell. Read uh, two. Enchanted. Mm -hmm. Charmed. Or fascinated by someone or something. So now, let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness. Or the witchcraft of sin. Go ahead. Doth obscure things that are honest. Doth obscure things that are honest. It don't make it clear. The scriptures are not clear. That's what's honest. God's laws is honest. But now when you look at the scripture, a brother, if I say it, the porn will have them have the dumb look on your face. Cause now you call a brother up and then you ask him what that scripture mean. And he just got that look like, you know, he can't, he can't explain it. Why? Cause it, it obscured things that are honest. Now it don't make it clear to you no more. Because why? You engulfed in that thing, man. You've been bounded by that sin. Satan got you chained up. To the point you feel as though you can't come up out of it. All right? So read that again. For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. And the wandering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. You see that? And the wandering of concupiscence. Look up concupiscence. Concupiscence. Strong sexual desire. Uh -huh. Lust. You see that? Lust. Strong sexual desires. So it says, and the wandering of concupiscence, strong sexual desire and lust, will what? Doth undermine. Will pervert. The word undermine goes into pe being pervert, perverted. Go ahead. Undermine the simple mind. So it will pervert the simple mind. That's porn. That is porn. Concupiscence is porn. Strong sexual desire, lust. It's going to pervert the simple mind. And if it's perverting your mind, it's not making things, it's making things that's honest, not clear to you no, now. All right? Let's go back to the article. So, uh, revenge porn, bestiality, orgies or rave, whatever it is, porn users have their moral compass completely shifted and their view of sexuality as it relates to others and themselves is highly abnormal. abnormal. Go ahead. They do not hold a healthy view of themselves, others, or life in general leaves a huge, wide open door for Satan to come, come in, in and completely deceive, deceive them. them. Throughout the scriptures, we are warned about the craftiness of Satan and how he uses deception to lure people away from God. Satan uses a lot of deception to lure them into porn. Right. All right. That's all I want on that. Uh, give me the other article. Give me the other article real quick. Read that. Pornography addiction, addiction grips young Americans compared to crack cocaine. Listen, they're comparing, they're comparing pornography to crack cocaine. That's the level porn is on. Go ahead. Online porn. Fastest growing addiction in the U.S. Go down. Now, this is, I uh, don't know if you're a brother or Edomite or whatever, but he, he was addicted, and he's going to tell you his story as far as dealing with porn. All right, watch this. Denver, porn addiction is the fastest growing addiction in our country and one of the most hidden. This thing doesn't go away. It's like a cancer in the brain. But it's cancer in the thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's Set cancer in the thoughts. Go ahead. Said a recovering porn addict who asked to be called Joe as he didn't want to reveal his identity to the public. You need darker things. 
harder things, more violent things often. Read. For this addict, the seed was planted when he was in the sixth grade and watched an R-rated movie. Over time, his addiction slowly escalated. Right, so he started watching it in the sixth grade. All right, he started watching in the sixth grade. I think all of us probably started watching it around that time. Probably like, uh, yeah, around that time. Yeah, sixth grade. We were about 11, 12. Yeah. Go ahead. I know that in our society, it's not understood how detrimental it really is. It destroys the mind. It do what? Destroys the mind. Porn destroys your mind. Go ahead. Watch this. It destroys the ability to function. You can't function. Brothers ain't getting nothing done. Yo, my man, didn't we give you, um, I know we gave you a, uh, an assignment to complete. Why is it taking so long? What's going on? Oh, I, I couldn't come up with nothing. I, I couldn't, I, I'm not able to think. It's taking weeks. We behind now. Why? Because, read that again. I know that in our society, it's not understood how detrimental it really is. It destroys the mind. Mm -hmm. It destroys the ability to function. So it destroys your ability to function. You can't function. You have no willpower. Okay, go ahead. You can't look at women in the same way, and Joe said. And you're not going to look at women in the same way. Yeah, it separates you from reality. Right. It separates you from reality. All right, read on. Pornography is often compared to crack cocaine. Damn, so... Porn is compared to crack cocaine now. Read on. Nobody knows that better than certified sex addiction therapist Chris Simon. Read. That's really why I have this treatment center is to help people who have my similar experience, Simon said. So my man done made up, a, my man done came up with a, a treatment center. Just like if you was going to a rehab center for crack, <laughs> for being on drugs. He got, a, he got a treatment center for those that's addicted to pornography. Because why? They go hand in hand. Porn and crack go hand in hand. Go ahead. Simon founded Denver's Restoration Therapy Center in 2014 after battling his own pornography addiction. He said most parents don't realize the biggest users are kids between the ages of 12 and 17. Yep. With their first exposure averaging around eight years old. Damn. It's probably even, it's probably even younger than that now. Go ahead. The pornography industry is really out to get kids hooked on it at an early age because they know that's when they're most pliable. Mm -hmm. They're most easily influenced because of their brain development, Simon said. That's where it all starts, the brain. Watching internet porn floods your brain with dopamine and opioids. Read that again. Watching internet porn floods your brain with dopamine and opioids. Go ahead. Drugs... That makes you feel good. Just like heroin. Heroin is an opioid. Crack, dopamine. Go ahead. And you can keep it high for prolonged periods of time with a click, click of, of a, a mouse. mouse. <laughs> you, you go to the next one. And then you go to the next one. Well, I, I used to do it. That's how I know. I used to do it. Before it came in this truth, yes, I had that same addiction. For, for a click of a mouse. Go ahead. It was intoxicating. It was like all my pain, all of my self-hatred, all of that was muted, mm -hmm. was gone as soon as I looked at pornography. It was like it all washed away, Joe described. Right. Just like a drug. You get high to escape what? Reality. So now you go to porn to do what? Escape reality. Go ahead. Joe said that the feeling of relief was always temporary and was always followed with feelings of guilt and shame. Right, because Satan left. <laughs> soon as you, soon as you, you, uh, you ejaculate, Satan is gone now. Satan has left the building. All you left with is you and reality again. Go ahead. Shame is the reason the addiction continues and becomes stronger as time goes on. Because you don't want anyone to know, Joe described. Read. Rather than developing healthy coping skills. Yo, just like crack. You don't want nobody to know you smoke crack. <laughs> you, you're in the dark with it. Whatever. Right? You understand? So don't ask me how I know that. All right. I had a, <laughs> my uncle, he, he dealt with that. All right. So, but that's what they do. 
they deal with it. They go get their stuff in the early morning hours. You would never know that they was a crackhead until you see them later on in life. You're like, damn, you smoke. They losing weight and all that stuff, right? Go ahead. Rather than developing healthy coping skills, they learn to go to pornography, and those difficult feelings will go away. They'll numb out, said Simon. Right. So they're not, they're not even fighting a the battle. They, they, they're losing. So rather than developing healthy coping skills, how do we cope with this? How do we cope with uh with um with with our, with stuff like this now? How do we cope with it? With the scriptures, right? Give me that Romans fifteen four. Romans chapter fifteen verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, uh -huh. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right. So. That's how we know how to cope with any uh, trials or tribulations that we're going through today. We cope with it through the Bible, through the scriptures. That's what gives us hope. That's our comfort. Go ahead. For Joe, that false sense of freedom from his depression ultimately chained him to his addiction. It ultimately did what? Chained him to his addiction. It bounded him to his addiction. Go ahead. You see. Viewing porn over time causes your brain to form new neural pathways. Those neural pathways are demons. Esau just like to use, uh, they like to use their uh, articulate words and so forth, scientific. That's a demon. So those neural pathways are demons you're letting into your spirit. Go ahead. The more you view it, the stronger those pathways become. Right. Remember, it brings, remember we just read in uh, Matthew 12. Seven more demons will, or seven more wicked spirit will come. So the more you watching porn, for example, say you're watching, you you start off watching soft porn, then you move on to hardcore. After that, now you watching uh oh gosh child porn. From there you watching gay porn. Then you say that's not enough. Bestiality comes up. Now you watching animals have sex. It's an ongoing thing. You're you're letting new you're bringing in seven wicked spirits more wicked than the one that you had before. That that's those new that's those new neural pathways. That's those those stronger neural pathways that that come in. Go ahead. The flood of dopamine in your brain overloads your receptors, and eventually you need harder stuff and more of it to get the same high. You see that? Now you need more of it to get the same high. That's you. That's those other doors that stop that uh, start to open up now. Like, damn, bro, you you uh you still watching porn? Yeah. What is it? What type of porn are you watching? Regular porn? You still watching regular porn? Yeah. Nah, not no more. I moved on to gay porn. Or oh, I moved on. I moved on to child porn now. Now, now, uh, now. Next time you talking to brother, he watching he this bestiality now. Okay, so it says that flood of dopamine in your brain overloads your receptors and eventually you need harder stuff and more of it to get the same high. Just like a crackhead. Read on. This is the, si this is the exact same experience heroin addicts have when they talk about chasing the first high, said Simon. Told you. See how it, the opioids is like oh, heroin is an opioid. So now he even comparing it to heroin. Go ahead. Simon said the earlier a child starts watching online porn, the worse the consequences. Multiple studies show porn users struggle to keep relationships, are unhappy with their partners, mm -hmm. have low libido, mm -hmm. and often prefer porn over sexual relationships with a person. So why? Because you're not separating you from reality. I said that wrong. But edit that out. But go ahead. Experts like Simon are seeing a new phenomenon, porn-induced erectile dysfunction, or PIED, and it's skyrocketing for men in their 20s. So, men, you in your 20s and you have an ED. You in your 20s have an ED because of porn. Medications for ED don't actually work that well because it's not about a physical response. Right. It ain't got nothing to do with physical. Go ahead. The body works fine. Your body is good. It's about an emotional response. It's your spirit. It's something in your spirit. 
Your body is good, but it's something that's in your spirit that's making you like that. It's an evil spirit. It's a demon. That's those uh, new neural pathways. Go ahead. Said Simon, reality just can't compare. There you go. Reality just can't compare to what you're dealing with in the spiritual realm. So porn is separating uh, separating uh, you from reality and got you in a whole illusion. You in, the, you in some type of illusion. Go ahead. Pornography addiction just does. Doesn't just affect men. Simon said more women are watching porn, and he's seeing a big increase in women needing treatment for online porn addiction. Right. It's sisters, too. It's brothers and sisters. Go ahead. There is hope. Sisters just on the low with it. But a lot of them are watching as well. Go ahead. There is hope. Therapists like Simon said the first step is quitting porn altogether. Cold turkey. You got to leave it alone, cold turkey. But like I said, we got solutions. We're going to get into that soon. Go ahead. Something that's known in the recovery world as rebooting. This allows your brain to form new, healthier neural pathways. Mm -hmm. It could take anywhere from three months to three years, depending on how often the person was watching internet pornography. So, he's saying there is hope. Therapists like Simon said the first step is to quit porn. So, you, first step, you got to quit. You got to admit you got a problem. All together. Then it says something that's known in the recovery world as rebooting, rebooting. Give me that in uh, Romans 12. Romans 12 and verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. So don't be conformed to this world. Go ahead. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you have to change by the what? By the renewing of your mind. So that's rebooting and creating those new those new neural pathways. You got to repent. You got to leave it alone all together. Okay? So that's how you're going to create those uh that's how you're going to create those new neural pathways that he's that Esau is talking about here. But you got to renew your mind. You got to repent. Keep the commandments. That's the rebooting. Read on. Go back to the article. That is the real power of the pornography addiction. Mm -hmm. Those neural pathways get built so strongly and so ingrained, it takes months, even years to recreate bigger ones so that those are no longer primary, Simon said. So, listen, you got to, damn. So that means somebody that's dealing with porn, that's, that's like somebody that's uh, dealing in um, homosexuality. You know, the leadership say they got to sit for, like, that person can't get married right now. They got to sit for a minute, right? But with porn, it's almost like the same thing. It take it take a couple years for you to, to get that thing out of you, depending on how long you was watching it. Like, for me, I give an example of myself because I, I used to dabble in porn before the truth. But once I came in the truth, the Lord all praise to the most high, I haven't had those urges to deal with that. You know, because all praises, I, I got married and got a wife. All right, but some some people it may be different. They they may come in this truth, they may dealt with that in the world, but they may come in this truth and that's still their battle. That is still going to be their battle. Okay, so it's something they gotta they gotta oh, they gotta overcome it. They have they must overcome it. All right, go ahead. Simon also recommends getting rid of any visual stimulus that could trigger a relapse. So this is what we're going to get into right here. So he's giving some solutions. That's what we're going to get into, solutions. All right? So Simon said, what? matter of fact, uh, you can hold that part. You can take that down. We'll get back to that. Uh, from there, from there, give me. Because. Remember I said one battle that uh, brothers and sisters are losing is the pornography. So we just read a couple of ar ar articles on pornography. All right. So now, even on social media, social media, like the brother was saying, those things can trigger. Matter of fact, go, go put it back up, put it back up, put it back up, put it back up. Read that. Go ahead. Simon also recommends getting rid of any visual stimulus that could trigger a relapse, like so, Facebook. So he's giving solutions. Say, look, remember, he been through it. Excuse me. He been through it. He have a, his own center and so forth. So he said, you may want to get rid of any visual stimulus that could trigger 
a relapse. Like what? Facebook. Like what? Facebook. Why would he be saying Facebook? Because guess what? Facebook promotes porn too. You will see a big booty hole scroll. You would just be scrolling on Facebook and guess what? Big booty holes just pop up. You're like, yo, where the hell that came from? You ain't click on nothing. It's just on your feed. Go ahead. Instagram. Instagram is one of the worst. You got Instagram. I think you got Pinterest. TikTok. TikTok. Okay. It, okay, so those, uh, but yeah, Instagram is crazy. Go ahead. And dating sites like Tinder and Bumble. And OnlyFans. Go ahead. Simon said, make sure your therapist is a certified sexual addiction therapist and recommends group therapy like Sex Addicts Anonymous. Right. Now, you can take that down. All right. So he gave some solutions. Why? Because even like like he said, even on social media, social media. All right. Hey, give me the um, watch this. Let me show you about social media. Let me show you about social media. Give me the cookies, cookies. The term cookies. Because you ever notice when you go on any website, you got to click on the cookies? Like me, I, I, I bypass that thing. I, I, find another, I find another site. But a lot of sites now, they advise you to click the cookies. Why? Watch this. HTTP cookies or Internet cookies are built specifically for web browsers to track. To do what? Track. So to track. Personalize uh-huh. and save information about each user's User session. session. You see that? Hey, read um read on. A session is the word used to define the amount of time you spend on a site. Mm-hmm. Cookies are created to identify you when you visit a new site. A new site. So it's to track, personalize, and save information about a user's session. And guess what? Now they know what you like. They say, yo, click these. Uh, it'll pop up all the time. I know everybody sees it. Cookies. You want to get on this website? Click these cookies. You click it. Now they, uh, once you click it, now they tracking you. And they know what you like. They study you. So if you clicked on something, so now you go back on Facebook and you wonder why, damn, why, these, why all these big booty these women on it. And because you clicked on a, you forgot a site you went to that uses cookies that you clicked on, and now they know what you like. They study your spirit, and they putting it on to the, on your feed now. Even on YouTube. On YouTube now, you can, on YouTube now, you don't even have to actually watch a video no more. You just, <laughs> if you watch that video, if you scroll down on the YouTube thread, and you, and you just, Stop in a video for two seconds. It already got you as what you, it's in your history that you watched it. I'm like, what the hell? I didn't even watch this drawing. I didn't even spend two minutes on this one. But it's in your, it's in your uh, history now. All right? And then they keep feeding you that same, whatever you was watching, they keep feeding it to you. They keep feeding it to you. Why? Because Esau is studying your spirit. They seeing what you like. So they keep, they, why? They're, uh, they're poking at your impulses. They're trying to get you, they're trying to make you triggered to what? Relapse or to get involved in, involved in that sin or watching porn. All right? From there, give me um, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So even though we walk after the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Go ahead. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Mm-hmm but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Right. So this is our job. Our job is to pull down strongholds, spiritual strongholds. Go ahead. Casting down imagination. Believe it or not, porn is a, is a stronghold on our people. Porn is a stronghold on brothers and sisters, man. Go ahead. Casting down imaginations Mm -hmm. and every high thing that exalted itself. Because when you watch porn, you're imagining what? You're imagining what you've seen on that screen. When you're watching porn. And then you you try to relate that to reality, and that's what you want. You forgot, but that's just on a TV screen. Go ahead. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. 
and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So, brothers and sisters, that's what we must do. We got to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. All right? Every thought. All right? So, now we're going to get into some uh, solutions, all right, to help with winning the battle. To help with winning the battle. Yes, Romans 13 and 14. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. Make not what? Provision for the flesh. So make not provision for the flesh. Make not provision for sin. Don't make provision for sin. Read it again. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Because why would you make provision for the flesh? So you can lust. So you can fulfill your lust. Whatever, whatever lust is in you, okay, you want to fulfill it. So you're going to make, you're going to set things up in order to fulfill that lust. You're going to prepare to fulfill that lust. Watch this. Go, go down. This is a uh, Bible hub. All right. Bible hub.com. Give me, uh, yeah, the first one. Uh, first comment, Elliot's commentary for English readers. Watch this. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, a continuation of the metaphor introduced in Romans 13, 12. So invest and identify yourselves with the spirit of Christ as to reproduce it in your outward walk and conduct. Make not provision for the flesh. So make not provision for the flesh. Go ahead. Take no thought for the flesh. So, as so he says, take no thought for the flesh. Go ahead. So as to supply a stimulus to its lust. Uh -huh. To supply a stimulus to its lust. Go ahead. A life of luxury and self-indulgence is apt to excite those fleshly the impulses, impulses with the Christian, which the Christian. the Christian should try rather to mortify. He therefore warns his readers not to give their thoughts to such things. So he says to a life of luxury and self-indulgence, meaning pleasure, is apt to excite those fleshly impulses. That's what Facebook does. That's what uh, social media does. All right? It excites those fleshly impulses in us to make us react, to trigger us. All right. That's why brother, what the brother that's dealing with porn and so forth, we tell him like, bro, stay off, stay off social media. Cause that's what is going to trigger you. It's going to lead to the next thing. It's going to lead to the act. Okay. It says, which the Christians should try rather to mortify. So pretty much stay off of it. If you can't just, if there are, uh, you know, they have where you can like certain things that pop up, you can, um, you can delete it or tell them. You, I think it's an option where you can say show less of this. All right, on Facebook. I know it's an option on Facebook. You say show less. I don't want to see no more of this. So it start to show less of it. All right, but if you don't do any, it's going to keep, if you don't do anything, it's going to keep popping up and popping up. All right? But that's what it goes into for not make, don't make provision for the flesh. All right? Don't put yourself in a, in a situation where you're going to make, you're going to uh, fulfill your lust. That's going to have you fulfill your lust. That's that you're going to give into those impulses. All right. From there, from there. Give me, um, give me Sirach 18 and 30. Ecclesiasticus chapter 18, verse 30. Read, go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetite. See what the Bible says, don't go after your lust, but refrain yourself. Hold back yourself from your appetite. Your appetite is something you love. That's something you desire, your passion. But we got to have self-control. Read it again. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. Mm -hmm. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. You see that? You see that? So if we give ourselves to our pleasures, all right, we become a laughing stock to our enemies. All right, from there, give me um, give me Sirach 30, 31, 13. Ecclesiastes chapter thirty one verse thirteen. Mm. Remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing, and what is created more wicked than an eye? 
You see that? Because why? The eye is the window. You ever heard the expression, the eye is the window to your spirit? Your eye is the window to your spirit. Read that part. Read that again. Remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. So a wicked eye is an evil thing. Go ahead. And what is created more wicked than an eye? And what is created more wicked than the eye? Because whatever you see, that's what that's how you in uh, your spirit. It gets into your spirit. Whatever you look at, it's going to get into your spirit. The eye is the window to your soul, the window to your spirit. Give me Job 30 and 1. That's why Job said this. Job chapter 31 verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. You see that? Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Go ahead. Why then should I think upon a maid? Why should I think upon another woman? I made a covenant with my eyes. Why? Because the eye is the window to your spirit. So he made a covenant with his eyes. From there, give me Matthew's um, 5 and 27. Matthew 5 and 27. Got a couple more scriptures. Got a couple more scriptures. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You see that? That's porn. That goes into porn as well. Okay, if you're if you're married and you're gonna you could you go to porn. If you marry, you watching pornography. What are you doing? You look, you looking on another woman to lust after her in your mind. That's what you're doing. Now you come back to your wife like, yo, I need you to be able to throw your legs up, or I need you to be able to um, hang hang glide off a pole or something like that. Knowing your wife is not capable of doing that, but because you've seen it on a, on porn, because you've been lusting after the sister, that you seen her do it. Now you think now reality kicks in. Now you bring it back to your wife and. <laughs> Now she's in the hospital because she tried something you knew she couldn't do, but you you egged her on to try to do it. You understand? But that's what happens when you're watching porn. Read that again. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman uh -huh. to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Right. So you commit adultery already with her in your mind, in your mind. From there, from there. Give me uh give me Colossians three and five. Colossians chapter three, verse five. Couple more scriptures, couple more scriptures. <clears throat> Colossians chapter three, verse five. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication. So fornication. So Paul said you gotta get uh look up the word mortify. Mortify. Can we just read that word in the article as well? What does it mean to mortify? Mortify. Subdue the body or its needs and desires by self-denial or discipline. Read that again. Subdue the body or its needs and desires by self-denial or discipline. So to mortify your members means to subdue your body. Bring your body into subjection. All right. The body or is subdue the body or its needs and desires by self denial or discipline. All right. There's another word. Fast. Fasting. OK. Fasting. Give me. Um, but before we get that, give me first Corinthians chapter nine verse. You can start at twenty six. Oh, I'm sorry. Go back. Go back. Go back to um, uh, Colossians three and five. We ain't finished that. Read that again. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members. Bring your body. Subdue your members. So mortify means to subdue your members. Go ahead. Which are upon the earth. Uh-huh. Fornication. So you got to subdue fornication. You got to bring that into that thought into subjection. Read on. Uncleanness. You got to bring uncleanness into subjection. You got to subdue that. Go ahead. Inordinate affection. Inordinate affection. Homosexuality and so forth. Okay. Um... What's it called? Um, pedophilia and so forth. You got to bring them thoughts into subjection. Read. Evil concupiscence. And evil sexual desires. You must bring that into subjection. Subdue that. Go ahead. 
And covetousness. Covetousness, wanting something that someone has had, w- wanting something that someone else uh, have. Go ahead. Which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. Read on. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You see that? For which things sake the wrath of God. Judgment cometh on the children of disobedience. Not breaking God's laws. From there, give me 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I. Not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You see that? Paul says he brings his body under subjection. You understand? So that what? He's not committed sin. He's, that means he's what? Subduing his members. He's mortifying his members. All right. Read that again. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Right. So he preaching to others, but he himself then bring his body into subjection to sin. And now, therefore, guess what? He's breaking God's laws. Meaning what? He's not practicing what he preaches. Okay. From there, from there. Give me uh, uh, fasting. Mark, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Last scripture. This last scripture. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So, brothers and sisters, all right, like you said, you got to subdue your thoughts. All right, you got, we got to learn to subdue our thoughts. All right, and then do what? Read that again. And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Right. So this is going into self-denial. We must fast. Christ says some of those demons, a lot, some of those demons that you have on you, you got to, they can only come out but by fasting. That's the only way. Okay. So like, for example, for a drug addict and so forth. Because think about fasting, you're denying yourself food. You're denying yourself things that your body actually needs. So just think about you fasting, you would, uh, you know, trying to get off drugs and so forth. A lot of times people run to rehab, but they never, they never thought to try to fast. You understand? But Christ said, what? Read that again. And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Right. So that type of spirit, those that evil spirit, you must fast. Our people must learn to fast. So brothers and sisters, that's one way to overcome your addiction to porn. All right? Learn to fast. All right? So with that, I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you all glean something out of the class. All right? Officer Jazz, IUIC Philly. Shalom. <laughs>